Welcome back to part four in the FPS tutorial series. So what we're going to do today is we're going to create the HUD on the gun to display our ammo counter and our magazine capacity. So let's go to blueprints. Let's create a new folder and type in widgets. Let's open that and let's create a user interface widget blueprint. We'll call it WBP underscore gun HUD. Let's open that up and you'll see that we need to add a text block. So in this text block, we see that it is fill screen. We want it to display in world on our gun. So instead of fill screen, we want to do custom. And you'll see that it actually changes the size of this. So let's set our anchor to be centered and our text alignment to be 0.5 and 0.5 fill justification make sure we center that and make sure your position is set to zero otherwise it will create an offset because we've set our alignment to 0.5 that's halfway across on the right or centered and then centered on the Y. I want to make sure that we don't have an offset. Now we have this text block here. And what we can do is we need to change the text at, uh, at any time more dynamically. So if we go to the content on the right, to the text block, instead of typing in a value here, we want to create a binding. Let's create binding. And we need to cast to the player, get a reference to the player, and get the player's current magazine count or current ammo from his magazine capacity. So let's cast to, and we have to reference our character, the AC underscore character, AC underscore character, and we want to get player on. So this is the pawn that you're playing as. It's because it's not a multiplayer game we're just doing single player stuff right now we don't have to worry about getting a specific pawn or a specific player index we can just use player index zero we have not actually created the integer value we need for this but we've gotten our reference so what we should do is go back to the character and on the left we want to create a new variable let's do an integer variable because we want it to be a whole number and we will name this current ammo. So this is the amount of ammo that we have. We don't need to make the instance editable. And we will start at zero. Actually, let's start at 25. We'll start at 25 just for now. And we can actually go back to our gun HUD and we can drag off and we can type in that variable that we just made. So current ammo. And now we can get current ammo. And we can actually just plug that directly into this. So now that we've changed the value of this and in the graph, what we need to do is we need to add it to our character. So how we want to do is we want to display it. So we're looking at the gun. We want to display it in world next to the gun here. So how we do that is we want to get the weapon. And we, if we go to the skeleton, you'll notice that we actually already made a socket for it. So you'll see a HUD socket here. It already starts on the weapon. So we're going to utilize the location of this socket and attach the widget to it. Let's go to the character. And with the weapon selected, we want to add component and we want to add widget. And because we made it a child in the hierarchy of the weapon, we can actually go to parent socket over here on the right with the widget selected, and we can type in or hit the magnifying glass and find the HUD socket that is on the gun. Now you can see that the widget has actually attached to that place. So on the right side, we now need to assign that widget. So you'll see that there is a widget class blueprint here. 
and we want to find the one that we made WBP underscore gun HUD. Boom. So it's large, but we will adjust that. So let's go ahead and rotate it to the location that we find appeasable, and we will change the draw size. We also need to change the value of the scale transform here. So let's go ahead and play and see how it looks and do our adjustments. So you saw that even though I put the value as five, because I made it take in the player's current ammo value, it actually adjusts this value to what is actually in the player character, what the what the value is for him. So we'll move this over and play. Boom. Now we can see how much ammo is in the gun. And you can adjust this. Obviously, I have it attached to the socket. You can either adjust it by moving it on the character or going to the skeleton, clicking on the HUD socket, and you can actually move this socket around. So let's move it back just a little bit and let's hit play and test that. Yeah, now it's a little more, more centered on the weapon. So it is static. We can use spring arms, which is a big part of this project in, and utilizing um, dynamic instances of components inside of the player. So let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to just keep it where it's at for now, but we're going to add the implementation of the ammo. Let's find the fire, weapon fire. And we want to find the fire function we made. So every time we fire a bullet, we want to subtract from this ammo count. So let's move this over. And right after this line trace, right after we've actually fired, we want to get current ammo. And then we want to drag another one and set current ammo. So what we do is this node right here gets what our current value is at, which is 25. And now we want to subtract. So we can subtract integer minus integer. And now that we have this updated value, current ammo minus one, we want to plug it into a new set current ammo. So now we're actually getting the value, subtracting it, and then updating the new value. And then we can go ahead and plug it in. Now you'll see that here, as we fire our weapon, that value starts to go down. We have not set any hard limits, so you can fire infinitely right now. So this will actually go into the negatives if I continue to fire. But now we have, we have that updated. So let's go ahead and set um add the ability to reset this uh, back to its maximum amount so let's go to the project settings we'll go to input and we want to create another action mapping and we'll name this reload select the key value input press r and we can go back here and type in the name of the input action we just made so input action event reload and we, for now, just want to set current ammo. So what we're doing here is we're just resetting it to the value that we choose. So I've shot weapons. I press R, it reloads. R reloads. R reloads. Now we need animations for that. And we might need a timer. We also want to set the uh, the gun to not be able to shoot unless our maximum ammo, our current ammo, is above zero. So let's go ahead and add the current ammo and see how we feel about it. So we want to go to the fire, weapon fire. We want to go into the fire here. 
So we can do our check in a few different areas. We can either input it here before we play our weapon sound to make sure that we have the ammo to shoot, or we can do it in this macro. So I'm actually going to do it in this macro because I don't want the game to say that we are between shots. We do want to see if the trigger is pressed. The reason we want to do this is we want to play a sound uh, of the gun magazine being empty, the empty click, if the trigger is pressed and we have less than zero. So set triggers pressed to be true. And then we want to do a branch. And this branch is going to give us a true or false. So get our current ammo. If it is greater than zero, then we fire. Now, I'm at zero and I can no longer click. I can reload and I can go through it again. One thing that we didn't do, however, because of the place we placed it, is if we continue to hold fire, we can actually go below zero. And that is because we go here at the end of this loop to check for trigger press to loop it back. We actually aren't checking for the ammo count. So what we can do is we can actually slide this over. Make sure that the loop goes back into the true or false check. And now it'll work. There we go. I, can, I can't click. I can't shoot. But I can reload. And I can go through it again. Awesome. Isn't that great? And just like that, we've got our gun HUD. And we've got shooting. We've got reloading. And we now have an actual magazine for the weapon. So next time, we will pick it up by polishing off this reload system, adding the reload animation, and adding the magazine empty click if we don't have ammo and we're actually shooting the weapon.